So welcome back to the channel. While it's storming outside and all week long, I thought I'd knock out some inside projects that I need to take care of. And today we're gonna to tackle a leaky flush valve on my American Standard Champion 4 toilet. Now sadly, I paid very good money for these toilets because I thought they were really good quality. They claim an extremely high flush. It's the ones you see at your big box retailer that says, hey, it'll flush a bucket of golf balls. So after spending several hundred dollars on the toilet, I was expecting a long service life out of them before I was gonna to have to do anything. Well, about 12 to 16 months later, we're already having a leaking toilet. Now signs of that is you'll hear it running in the middle of the night, you'll start seeing streaking inside of your toilet, and you need to keep in mind, not only does this impact either your electric bill if you have a well and pump, your water bill if you have city water, but this is also not good for your septic system. You're putting a lot of extra load out there, especially if you have an in-ground septic system like we do with a leach field. It'll just keep it constantly saturated. So you want to address this problem as soon as you can. Now the other very bad thing about the American Standard is it's one of the few toilets out there I've noticed you can't just buy the flapper, which is typically your failure point on a toilet. American Standard this is a really bad design. They make you buy an entire flush valve assembly. Now you very well may need it should you have a crack in the plastic or a leaking seal down here on the bottom where it goes through the top tank. I'm gonna show you today how to replace this. We'll walk through the steps real quick. But ultimately it was the flapper that sits up top right here on mine. So I don't know how well you can see this, but a quick fill around on mine, you can see the rubber seal here has started separating, bubbling up and not making a good sealing surface. So water was leaking around either side of this hump. I don't know why that has failed after only a year. The other thing you just noticed, and the whole reason I decided to make this video, this is removable, contrary to popular belief. I bought this kit off of Amazon. I went on some forums all over the place and I read a ton of reviews and everybody was complaining that you can't replace just the flapper. You absolutely can. Everybody was also complaining that you had to take the whole toilet tank off. That is just not the case. If your flapper is the cause of your problem, and most likely that is the problem, you don't have to replace this entire flush valve assembly. Now this is where American Standard is really messed up and let us all down. Typically you can buy just a flapper for most toilets. Well, I could not find just a flapper. I had to buy an entire $25 flush valve assembly to get what is probably a $4 flapper. So as you can see, this is threaded right here and it has a couple of catches. This is why most people think this is not removable because it actually locks in here. So when I thread this down, you have to grab a hold of the shaft right there. You can do this in the toilet. When it completely tightens, you're gonna hear it snap just like that and lock. So whenever you try to loosen it, you think that you're about to break that shaft. So if you go ahead and give it a nice little twist, you'll hear it click twice. It just unlocked, there's catches in there. So this piece is actually removable. You can take this off and put your brand new one on. Sadly, yes, you've bought an entire flush valve assembly that you don't need, most likely. But should you have a flush valve assembly problem, let me show you how to replace that. All right, so if you're not familiar with your toilet, this is what a elongated, they make a round elongated American Standard Champion 4 looks like but you can also find out by removing this top lid. When you take the lid itself off, you have all your different model numbers right here on the inside. Now, usually on the back side of the toilet, there's gonna to be a cutoff valve. I have mine inside the cabinet. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn your cutoff valve to the off position. Then you're gonna flush your toilet. That'll get the majority of the water out, but it's gonna stop at the top of your flush valve. And by the way, the top tank, contrary to popular belief, is sanitary. This water fills up in here and drops down into the toilet. Nothing can come back. Now you're gonna see some staining in here because we occasionally do get some fine clay silt in our water, or you may see iron in yours. So if all you need to do is just replace the flapper and you've determined that's your failure point, just unclip here. You can't lift up any further than this. You can reach your arm underneath, grab a hold of that shaft, and you can twist, hear that click, and I can unscrew this and screw my new one on. I just did this because I knew that was my problem. You can literally do this in 30 seconds. Now the flapper's replaced and we're good to go. By the way, since we're in here, I'll go ahead and explain how this mechanism right here works in case you need to adjust on your toilet. When the toilet fills up, you can screw this in or back out to raise and lower this cutoff valve assembly here. This is a float that'll actually lift up 
and cut off your water fill valve over here. So if you determine that you're not filling up correctly to the top of your tube right here, you can adjust this to raise or lower the water level, which will give you a better flush if you have more water in there. But if you're trying to conserve water, you can adjust this down as well. Typically, you want your water to stop about an eighth to a quarter inch below this overflow tube right here. Say you've determined you have a crack in your flush valve or a failure with the gasket that's on the underneath side. And if we take a look at our valve assembly here, you'll see it has a nut on the bottom and this is that gasket that I'm referring to. You could potentially have a leak when it comes to this or a failure somewhere else in the plastic. Although that's highly unlikely, chances are your failure is with the flapper itself. So should you determine that you need to replace your valve assembly, now that you have the water cut off, you will disconnect your fill hose right here, place your little bucket or container down because that will continue to leak just a little to drain the hose itself out. And if you look on the underneath side of the toilet, you have a nut to remove here. And on the opposite side, you have yet another nut to remove. Once you remove those two nuts, the top tank will come completely off. Don't forget it still has water in there. You want to be nice and level. Go to a shower, go to a tub. You can dump that remaining water itself out. It will not go down into that flush valve assembly as long as you remain level. So after you remove that tank, don't forget your valve assembly is going through the tank. Then you have this large nut that's on the bottom side of that tank that we just removed. It's a very quick process. Luckily, this kit comes with a spare wrench in case you threw your old one away that came with the toilet. So you can loosen and tighten this nut with that. So you literally remove one nut, replace your entire valve assembly, put it back in, slide the tank back down on top after you verify that the gasket that's on the bottom side of the tank is nice and in good shape. Slide the tank back in, tighten those same two nuts that I just showed you, reconnect your water valve, turn back on your water. You're also going to want to check around the bottom side of the toilet. There is another gasket underneath. The one that comes with it is a very large kind of rubber or foam gasket. It should still be in great shape. Make sure you don't have any leaks here or on your water valve connection here and double check underneath. No leaks here, nothing going down the back side of the toilet. Now we'll let this fill up, verify that we're just beneath the overflow valve and we can make any adjustments here with this threaded knob if we need to. So my water level is coming up too high. It is just about to go over the top of that tube. That also will waste water and cause a leak. So we're going to turn to the left, which will lower this valve, make four or five turns. We'll let a little water out so that'll activate the valve again and we'll make sure we've made far enough adjustments here, lowering down this air filled bladder that it'll raise up and cut this valve off before we get over the top of the overflow tube again. All right, it still came up too close to the top for my liking. So we're gonna repeat this process one more time. We'll do a few more turns here, lowering this. Let some water out. All right, so it just cut off. We're about a quarter inch low. I feel really good with that. We shouldn't have any excess leaking or problems now with this toilet. All right, so all you have to do now is place the lid back on and just give it a little bit of time. Listen, you'll hear whenever that automatic water valve kicks back on to determine if you have any leaks. So if you're curious about how to install a toilet like this and a toilet flange down there for the full install process, I'll include a video at the end of this showing how I installed these a little over a year ago. So feel free to drop a comment down and ask any questions if I didn't make anything clear for you, but that's how you can replace a flapper or valve assembly on an American Standard Champion toilet. We'll catch you on the next video.